Hey, man. Hey, married man. I, I just got married. <laughs> By the time you hear this, well, yeah. not you. You're hearing I'm it right hearing now. It pretty early. By the time you, the listener, I will be. Hope, well, man, I hopefully, man. yeah, hopefully, what it works out. We need to. Oh, we need to do an alternate awkward. intro. All right, let's record it right In now. Case. Don't cut this out. Great. Yeah. Here we go. Ready. All right. Hey, man. Hey, single man. Hey. <laughs> it looks like you're still not. Married. She. Uh, she left me at the altar. It didn't work out. <laughs> Oh man, I really hope it works out. Uh, I'd be rough to listen back wow. to. Wow, yeah. Are you just gonna Howard. text Connor a thumbs up or thumbs down <laughs> before this goes live? It worked. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. Oh wow, that. <laughs> well, yeah. So that's the thing. That's, that's a good life. That's fantastic. Well, I'm happy what, for what you. What are we talking about? You made it. Oh yeah, uh, we're talking about. The Harvey Resort Hotel in Lake Tahoe, actually State Lake, <laughs> State Lake, Nevada. <laughs> it's near Lake Tahoe. It's on the Nevada no, side. No, Lake, Lake Tahoe borders. Yeah, yeah I, it's on I the understand. Nevada where. side. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a fun bit. We record these weeks in advance. <laughs> That's a good time. Oh, is it a heist? <laughs> Three men dressed in blue it's a heist. Covers. Oh, I love a good heist. Because <laughs> then the FBI, they, they could then tax it, dude. Little and brother, ransom IRS. taxes are so high, dude. People are always like, "Oh, I can just ransom a casino, right?" And I'll make out with three men after the government takes the seventy percent of that. Things I learned last night. Um, okay, hold on. I need my timer. I don't. We're my very timer. prepared. Uh, so here's the deal. <laughs> As you're like, I need <laughs> so my I'm timer. Like, Wait, I don't have my timer. <laughs> my timer. <laughs> oh, my plans. <laughs> <laughs> so Lake Tahoe, which is beautiful, by the way. Uh, not anymore. It's uh, the water's going away. It's gone. Well, by the time this <laughs> comes out, this comes out. <laughs> that's part we'll of the wedding. Text, we'll text Connor yes or no. <laughs> yes or no. If there's still a lake there. <laughs> All right, let's film one just in case Lake Tahoe's okay, gone. Cool. It was such a beautiful. The old Lake Tahoe. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, God rest its soul. <laughs> well, this is actually a good thing. The lake is gone because I guess her plan one was to drown me and leave me in there. <laughs> yeah, but, but with it not being there, she decided to just leave. Yep. Yeah, she ran off to Vegas. The wild thing is I heard that the Pacific Ocean is draining back in and refilling it with salt water. Yeah, and through now it's California. <laughs> there's yeah, a lot right of over, over the, the mountains, mountains and through the woods <laughs> to Lake Tahoe. We go <laughs> Pacific Ocean is a magical thing. <laughs> it's pretty wild how nature works. So Lake Tahoe, which may or may not exist by the time this comes out. <laughs> Uh, so there's for those who don't know where it is. <coughs> it's Northern California. Yeah, it is on the border of California and Nevada. Yeah, and on the Nevada side, there's a, a town called State Line, aptly named because it's on the state line. Um, but it's a popular town. It's a popular tourist destination because it's on the state line of Lake Tahoe, a popular tourist destination where in Nevada it's legal to gamble. That's true. So they put up a whole bunch of casinos. And people go Tahoe it up for a little bit, and then they're like, you know what makes the lake even better? Losing all your money. That's what. So it's interesting <laughs> how Kansas is legal to to do that, and Missouri isn't. Yeah. So when I placed my bet on the Super Bowl, yeah, am I allowed to talk about this? I don't know. Yeah, I think you are. I don't see why. You okay, can't. I'm not There's a gambler. A, there was a reason. There was a legitimate reason. Yeah, you did this I'm stuff. not a gambler. This now we're far enough gambling. away that I think it's fine for me to say. Yeah, I had a brand deal that if the Chiefs had lost. You got the deal. I was going to get to like, you know, they were going to pay me some money to post on Instagram and be like, oh, they lost, but good thing I have this brand to make me happy or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then I realized, well, I'm going to make this amount of money if I win, if I, if they lose, but no money if they win. But you obviously wanted them to win. You're a fan. Which I was so conflicted. I was yeah. like, I don't want to go to the Super Bowl party yeah. and be like, I love it all decked out in my Chiefs gear yeah. and be like, let's go fly eagle fly or whatever. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, uh, so I, I wanted to place a bet on the Chiefs to win. That way, either way, you I got would the money. make that amount of so money. So that way, you want to be conflicted. So I had to take an Uber. <laughs> did, did I tell you this part? Yeah. Where I took an Uber just to the Kansas side. Yeah. To a parking lot in Kansas to place my bet 
and then took it home. And so you sat on the back of the Uber. I like, literally was on, like, man. I was like, just pull over here. This is fine. It was super sketch. Do you think he, that I didn't explain does that happen to him a lot? Oh yeah, it actually when I was an Uber driver, I would do it would be gambling. People would take yeah. well, I would drive people to the Kansas side to place bets, yeah. or uh I would drive people from the Kansas side to the Missouri side to buy cigarettes or alcohol. Oh. Because yeah. Kansas doesn't sell alcohol on Sundays. Yep. So Sunday I would drive people over to the Missouri side. There's a very specific gas station down <laughs> on uh uh four thirty five and one oh three, hundred and third, I mean. Uh that people go to to buy all their cigarettes and 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 drinks. Yeah. They have a uh, Kansas discount, <laughs> they, <laughs> but it really it was such a big deal that there would be like other Uber drivers there. Yeah. <laughs> like we all we were just all in the parking lot, like while people pot their cigarettes. You yeah. know, interesting. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's a thing. It's a thing. People go to State Line. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I totally get. Yeah. Yeah. They go there, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, like this was a popular tourist destination to begin with, and someone somewhere along the line was like, oh. Why not make more money off of this yeah. tourist destination, uh, which was um, the owner of the Harvey Resort and Hotel. Um, he was the, their their hotel was the first hotel or their casino was the first casino to capitalize off this. Okay. Um, the uh, the name or the owner's name was Harvey Gross, uh, which is a great name for a casino. Owner. Yeah. Um, but even better, Probably not even his real name. He changed it to that. Well, even better because his original occupation was he was a butcher. So he's oh. butcher Harvey Gross. Um, butcher and, Harvey Gross, and he uh, he butcher owned, comma Harvey Gross, butcher <laughs> butcher comma Gross comma Harvey Harvey <laughs> Butcher Gross <laughs> Harvey Butchin Gross. <laughs> can, you, can we say Butchin? <laughs> I said it twice. We might have to bleep it. Just bleep. bleep no, it don't. But listen, the problem with the bleeping <laughs> bit is it makes is it that it like makes it seem gorgeous. like you did say something really bad. <laughs> And then we rarely clarify. <laughs> <laughs> and when I listen back, I don't remember what you I don't actually remember the said. Actual joke. And it's like, wow, what did he say? What? <laughs> <laughs> so he was a butcher. He was a butcher. And then he got into the hotel game. That's a big leap. No, nah, here's what or, was sorry, going on. casino game. Here's what was going on. So state line at the time, this was like the fifties or sixties, was not a gambling town. It was a normal town on the edge of Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe got okay. really popular with the tourists. Yeah. And um he had a butcher shop in town. After His, the Chevy named their SUV after it. <laughs> everyone's like, I wonder what this truck is named after. This all new Chevy Tahoe. And everyone's like, Well, where, I don't know. Where can I find <laughs> the Chevy Tahoe may or may not exist by the time this comes out? Well, a lot of people don't realize that's why Malibu is so popular. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, dude. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, his wife was I've been like looking for this <laughs> town called Sonata. <laughs> and I've been I've been looking for F one fifty. I can't find <laughs> it anywhere. Uh, no, uh, his wife was like, "Hey, we got all these tourists in town. You've got your butcher shop, and that's cool. Whatever, and, you know, and it's cool yeah, to sell meat." Sure. Oh, his wife had the idea. Yeah, but his wife was Mrs. like, "Mrs. Gross." Yeah, Miss Gross <laughs> said, "Hey, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Sorry, I will correct people. Madame, I'm a married man, Madame now. Gross." <laughs> It, Madame. What's, what's what's madam? It, what's the point of that? Is that Mrs. Single? Ma- is it ma'am? Is married. Ma'am is a contraction to get rid of madam, right? I think so. Is madam? Is madam? I like that we widowed? both always look to Alex to be like, you're the you're no smartest stuff. of us. <laughs> And he normally doesn't say a word. And he just go, he just looks he at us like. He normally just looks away. <laughs> He's normally like, "Don't look at me." <laughs> so okay, well, we'll look at the the origin of ma'am and madam later, I guess. I guess um, <laughs> we have no way of looking it up now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so she says, "Hey, uh, we could hear me out. Buy a couple slot machines for people while they're waiting for their meats. Okay, and then maybe in the back room, put in a poker table and." Have it be Harvey's Wagon Wheel Butcher and Casino, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, okay, so you're saying we gotta spend money on slot machines, we gotta spend money on a poker table, and also a lot of money on a huge sign, <laughs> the huge that says flashing Harvey's sign. Wagon Wheel <laughs> Butcher and Casino. Babe, do you know how many? Uh, it, it's that's like a hundred so dollars for every letter. That's so many letters. Can we, that's it does. That's longer than the original Twitter <laughs> character limit. <laughs> Can you please just trim it down a little bit? 
Uh, so they did this, uh, and lo and behold, the casino made way more money than the meat did. Yeah, for sure. And so then they just tore down the shop and built gas a stations. Have also taken this model. Where that yeah, <laughs> every gas station I saw in Montana has a casino in it. Yeah, there's one actually right by my house that has a couple slot machines in it because it's right next to the lake really. There. Yeah. Oh, because it's like the lake. Mm-hmm. Oh, because it's like body of water laws. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. so weird. that Missouri's like that. Yep. Yep. I know they made a big deal of that in the show Ozark, but it's yeah. what a stupid law. Yeah, if you're right off. Then my the- my, the then my question is, does it have to be like it's not natural water, right? Like you can just make a lake. Can't you do like I a man-made lot of parking lot water feature? You know, <laughs> does my does my inflatable hot tub count? Yeah, how as many an, gallons as, does how, it have to how be? How much is a body of water? <clears throat> That's an interesting question that I don't have the answer to. Um, I, well, you come to my apartment. I got a slot machine, <laughs> but yeah, they got a couple. And of I slot also machines am running station. a new uh, marathon out of my apartment. It's just <laughs> run back and forth in my living room. <laughs> You didn't even reply to that thread. I just did, just, just oh, did, did before this. That was really funny. I love two thousand so laps. We had a conversation. I said, but be warned, no one's ever finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a, one of our our patrons just completed a uh, uh, marathon. Uh, did you have a marathon or was it a half marathon? It was a half marathon, but All I was right. going to give him full marathon. I think credit. we should quit giving people credit for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think that here I am saying I wanted no, to give I'm them serious, full marathon man. credit. I people I, for whatever reason <laughs> marathons is a huge accomplishment, and then somewhere along the way someone was like, "What if I did half?" And they're like, "You can put, you can put the sticker on your car." And now all of a sudden we're just like, "That's actually yeah, it's, that's the achievement." Half a marathon. Yeah, yeah. Sweater man's ran half a marathon, um, and I loved it because I ran half a successful business once. <laughs> The other half caught up to me eventually, and I didn't <laughs> and kind of failed. lost everything. But like half of it was running well. Well, Shay immediately responded. He posted it, and Shay, one of our patrons, immediately responded and said, "Couldn't do a full marathon. Quitter behavior." That's it, <laughs> right there. <laughs> the real alpha move is at the end of the half marathon, turn around and run it again. You know what I'm saying? Run yeah, the run other way. Again. Yeah, and then yeah, just, I'm just going. I'm. I'm doing this just for personal. Like this yeah. is just my workout. I'm not. And you're part of looking this. at every single person you pat going because they're still going the other way. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm better than you. Yeah, I'm doing too. Even if you were dead last, <laughs> finishing the half marathon, <laughs> it's been four days. It took you a long time to go 13.1 <laughs> miles. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I loved I loved the fact that he asked or he said he was listening back to figure out how many laps he did in your. In your living room, and we had a website for that. How many laps in Jaren's living room.com. I forget how many domains we've got. <clears throat> yeah, which if you want to know how many laps in Jaren's living room.com or something is, we have a website called How many laps in Jaren's living room.com. There you go. I'll tell you how long. But anyways, have uh, we so have we set up like a marketing <laughs> funnel on any of those sites? Have we used that smartly? There, can they get? Can they put their email on there? Are we good at uh, I don't business? Think, <laughs> I don't think they can put their email on there. It does. There is a redirect to back to the podcast in there, but let's be honest. Nobody found that site without. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No listening. one's stumbling on it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Some people we are. Running, I wanted to know we're which, spending a lot of money on an ad. I know. I wanted to know which for, half of the, the good business I was running <laughs> that fell into, you know? <laughs> That falls into the bad business half for sure. <laughs> that's yeah, that's definitely just a waste, but it's funny. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, good that's job. That's my good Twitter job. bio. Good job, sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste, but it's funny. <laughs> I need to talk about this casino. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so this casino got really successful. Sure. They established People it into a full out resort. The door. 190 room hotel. Jeez. Like that's what I'm saying. That's a huge stories. jump to go from a butcher shop to a casino business. Well, it was it was gradual. Like, he didn't just well, like build one <laughs> hotel room at a time. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying like no no no. I'm saying to pivot from a person who runs a casino or runs a butcher to yeah. be a person who runs for a casino is a huge jump. Yeah, that's a different. That's a very different. I don't business. care if you get into it gradually. Yeah 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 yeah. There was some growing pains there, um, <clears throat> but yeah. Harvey got super rich running this business for sure. Um, so did Madame. <coughs> well, they got a divorce. Uh, oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was a. I don't know. She got I her thirteen really <laughs> point one. He got his thirteen point <laughs> one. Um, and uh, casino became hugely successful. 
That's the point of the story, right? One of the biggest ones in the city. Uh, there's a few other casinos in town. What's it called? Wagon wheel. Is it still <coughs> called Harvey's wagon wheel butcher and casino? <laughs> no, it's just Harvey's resort. They got good meat though, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they sell meat anymore, um, but anyways, on the morning of August 26, 1980. Um, oh, is it a heist? <laughs> three men dressed in blue it's workers a heist. <laughs> oh, I love a good heist. <laughs> Three men dressed in pig costumes came in and they said, Butcher, butcher, where are you? <laughs> you know what I found out the other day that I didn't know? What's that? Um, and then we found this out at the draft because everybody at the draft, like they had the section down in the draft where you could go. So this curious <laughs> what the image of three men dressed as giant pigs well, conjured in his brain to go speaking of. <laughs> so they had all the people dressed in like I, I think what every team did at the draft was they were like, hey, you're our weird fan who comes to every game. We're going to fly you out to be in the front row Great. of the draft. And so everybody had all their weird fans in the front. Do you know about the Chiefs weird fan? Uh, the Superman? No. Um, the, there's a couple the guy with the wolf costume. I forget what they call it. <laughs> the mascot Casey Wolf. No, 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 no. <laughs> the guy who's got like a really bad wolf costume. Mm. You don't know about this. I don't know. I don't uh, remember there being a weird Chiefs fan there. Actually, there was went, a bunch of weird like they were decked out, but I don't remember a weird. I forget one. his name, but he was like big on Twitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and he robbed a bank in his Oof. like costume <laughs> stuff because it's all yeah. <laughs> he was the way he was affording to go to all these Chiefs games was that he was robbing banks. Not even like like you know oh I got into their system just like straight up like give me the money you know like and robbing then, and banks. And then he'd go buy tickets. And then he'd go buy as tickets. The <laughs> I I'll have that. to go look up Did the name catch for him. him. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he just quit tweeting one day. Yeah. And he quit going to games and people were like, what the heck happened? And then they were like, oh, oh guys. Yeah, he's in prison. He's in jail. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Uh no, yeah. So everybody was wearing their costumes. Well, I'm not getting three men dressed as pigs walked in and went all the way to the front. And can you pick a team? Pick a team in the NFL that you think might wear pigs costumes. Hold on, let me get there. I could not. I was like, why? You can't do it? Hold on. Well, I saw it, so I know because they were wearing the jerseys too, but I was like, what is the connection? I don't understand the connection. Oh, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> it doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, hold on. Let me guess. Uh, I'm going through all the teams in my head. <laughs> um, the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> you know what kind of looks like a jet? Pigs. <laughs> what team was it? It was the commanders. They're and they're uh, I looked it up. Their official mascot now is a pig. Why? They're the commanders, but their mascot is a pig. I don't understand it. I don't know where that came from. It's <laughs> it's pretty strange. Okay. <laughs> the only thing I could come up with was maybe pigskin um cuz that's the, what some people call the footballs. That's the only connection I could think of. Um but yeah, very yeah, strange. They, they move. made some weird decisions for that whole. <coughs> nah, that whatever. whole organization's a mess. But anyways, uh, so yeah, <laughs> three Washington Commanders fans walk into the. <laughs> walk into so three men walk into the casino wearing blue coveralls, and they're pushing a large object with a like with three like a, overalls or coveralls like the coveralls. Jet, like okay, I gotcha, yeah, 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 gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and they're pushing this large object that's on wheels that's got like a blanket over it, okay. and an IBM logo. Sure. And so they push it in. stuff. Yeah, and everyone's just like, oh, it's probably a printer or like some a single stuff. sheet of paper <laughs> with computer stuff written in Sharpie. <laughs> computer stuff. <laughs> official stuff is what it says. <laughs> Don't mind us. Don't mind us. We're just bringing in some official stuff. I mean, it's got <laughs> so many pieces of paper. It says this is official stuff. Computer things. If you really want to be specific about it, please don't ask us what we're doing. <laughs> we're from <laughs> IBM. Like Twelve pieces of paper. <laughs> Hey, Thursday, June 29th at 630. We are doing another patron hangout. Uh, these are super fun opportunities for us to just hang out on a Zoom call with our patrons, get to know you a little bit better, find out what's going on in your life, and it's, and have a lot of fun. Sometimes you might have seen some of these clips. Uh, they are absolutely wild. Uh, you guys do some crazy stuff in these videos, like pull-ups or eat pizza. Um, it's bonkers, uh, and we'd love to have you on there. Uh, Thursday, June 29th, 630. Text till into 66866 to become a patron and join us. Okay.
Okay. <clears throat> so they're walking in. They roll this thing into the lobby and they take off the the like the curtain or uh-huh. the cloth or whatever and then they just leave and they get in their van and what they drive away. It? It, what everybody there thought was like some kind of computer that the hotel ordered. Did it look like a computer? I mean, it was this big metallic computery looking thing. I've got a picture of it. Oh, um, oh. and so everyone was like, oh, yeah, that's just I can see the air holes. <laughs> I would immediately I'd see this and I go look at all those air holes. Someone's yeah, in that. This is a real Trojan horse. If that's I've ever a, seen it. That's a. I mean, is that the Statue of Liberty? That's Did the most Trojan us? horse looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, yeah, so they just put it in in the hotel, and then one of the security guards, after like a half an hour, was like, "Hey, has anybody like looked at that thing to see what it is?" And everyone's like, "No." And so he goes over, and sitting on the top of it is a note, and the note says, "This is a bomb," <laughs> and it says, "If you." Don't give me three million dollars. It will detonate, and this is the most sophisticated bomb you've ever seen. You will not be able to. It says that it. <laughs> it does. if you don't give me three million dollars, it'll detonate. This is the most sophisticated bomb. I have all the bombs. <laughs> it sounds like a like a Trump speech. Is that what you're saying? It does actually. This is the most sophisticated it, bomb. It like brags about how sophisticated this bomb is. It's a three page document detailing. How okay, that's what I'm saying. Sophisticated page, this bomb is. Page, page. <laughs> It's a bomb, a sophisticated bomb, a really complicated bomb. That you don't understand. I promise it's a bomb. Like, come yeah, on, it's, it's three pages, but it's forty size font. Yeah, yeah three double, pages, double eight words, <laughs> eight words, one letter per page. You figure out which order it goes in. You know, the three pages just say it's a bomb. It's a bomb. What does bomb a it's mean? I don't understand. Um, bomb it's a bomb it's a. I don't understand what they're trying to bomb say. A? There's no that's sure. left on top of it. Yeah. It has instructions for the ransom. It's a three million dollar ransom. Okay, and basically says, okay, go to this specific parking lot, pick up the payphone, go to this I'll machine, you. hit the button four times. <laughs> yeah, they, put twenty down. <laughs> like he's doing. Their he's note is having the person through. gamble on behalf he's of been the note banned from the hotel. He's like, I can't go in, but I'm gonna try to win three million dollars. <laughs> Just Don't put give. like two hundred dollars on red until That's what you I'm get saying. three million dollars. Until you get three million dollars, and if you don't, and if you don't, it blows up. It, the bomb will blow up. So you better be good. And it's at very it. sophisticated. You better be lucky. It's so sophisticated. Um. So he, <laughs> he, uh, he, he outlines this whole, this whole, or the note outlines. So this they whole, evacuate the building. Yeah, obviously. So they they immediately evacuate the hotel. They I'll tell you who following. doesn't like that. Gamblers, <laughs> they are aggressive. That's pretty fair. That's I told you about fair. the private detective that was at a church show once. That I was talking with, and he said Maybe. he's in Oklahoma. Yeah, and then, and I, I was trying to be like, oh my gosh, you're like a like a PI, huh? Yeah, I like, see, so yeah. you like follow people around and do like you know you stake out and do all that stuff. I was like, yeah. what's like, what's the craziest thing you've seen? And he said, honestly, man, ninety percent of my job is wives. Ask yeah. me to tail their husbands, and then I watch them gamble at casinos all day. <laughs> uh, and he goes, and they are so addicted to the gambling that they're so afraid they're going to miss the jackpot that they pee in the seats. That's disgusting. So think about that when you're in Vegas next. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, just bring wet wipes with you. That's why all the seats are leather. Yeah, yeah. Wipe them down before you sit Gross. down. Not it's even just for COVID, have- for the pee. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they need to have. Like a gym mentality, like have wipes everywhere so you can wipe them down after you use them. That or feels like use them. permission to be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like that feels like it would enable the problem more than it would fix it. It's like, the oh problem. yeah, people will just clean Oh, that's it why up. they leave those wipes there, honey. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so they evacuate the building and the FBI shows up and the FBI is like, okay, let's go ahead and and get them their ransom. Because they they look at the bomb and they're like, this bomb. Uh, it is pretty sophisticated. Um, Looks like a subway <laughs> freezer. <laughs> it yeah, really it's does. just a really bad ice machine. Yeah. <laughs> For anybody who's listening, it's literally two silver blocks on top of each other. There's yeah. nothing about this that looks sophisticated to me. Well, the FBI looks at it and determines this is very sophisticated. Sure. And so they said, well, it's because of the fifties. The FBI was like what two years old at that point. <laughs> well, this is the eighties now. Oh, okay. So this is the prime of the FBI. Honestly, Got it. this yeah. is when the FBI had all the. This movies. is when they were FBI in. Yeah, this was yeah, this was when the FBI was cool. Um, 
And so they, they're like, okay, let's get this ransom put together because this sure. bomb is pretty sophisticated. He told us. Um, we want them to disarm it for us and get us the, the money. But the process was going to be a little intense. Like they had to go to that place, make the phone call, and they were going to get some coordinates that they were supposed to fly a helicopter to um, full of gas and drop the helicopter full of the $3 million off at that location. Just drop off the helicopter? Leave. Yeah, and then they were supposed to leave. And then this guy the knows guy, how to fly a helicopter? Uh, allegedly. Um, okay. <clears throat> Uh, and so they, they're going through the process. They lower, they go get a thousand bucks and a bunch of when you just drop the up. helicopter off one betting this guy's going to crash it. You're like we can we can sacrifice a helicopter, <laughs> but if he can't if he can fly it. Yeah, sh- shoot it down. I mean a helicopter is probably worth more than three million dollars, right? True. I mean depending on the helicopter in the eighties though. Yeah, I don't know how much are helicopters. I don't know has how much in, are like FBI has inflation worth? really hit the helicopter market. I mean the 70s was super inflation. So by the 80s oh, okay. like it was probably pretty decently inflated as a blow up helicopter. <laughs> sure. So <laughs> what do they end up doing then? So what they did is it, they actually went to Harvey and they're like, do you want to pay the ransom? And he was like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna pay he's that. Got, he's I'm like, I'm a low million butcher. dollars. How would I pay the <laughs> ransom? <laughs> All I and they're like Harvey. Me. We know you run the we casino. We know who you are. And he's Harvey. like, he's like, uh, my wife runs the casino. I don't. I just, I just cut <clears> the <throat> meat. You know. And so, and then the FBI was like, well, we're gonna pay this ransom, but we're not gonna pay this ransom. You know. So they just get a thousand dollars cash, and then they. Fill I don't, why they give him the option? Do you just want to pay it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if he'd be like, if he'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And they'd be like, cool, case closed. <laughs> Another day at the FBI. <laughs> Like what are you talking about? Why did that? Why was that an option? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. All right, because then the FBI they, they could then tax it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh sure. <laughs> the FBI is looking out for the dude. Little and brother, ransom the taxes are so high, dude. People are always like, "Oh, I can just ransom a casino, right?" And I'll make out with three million after the government takes the seventy percent of that. You know what I'm saying, and like then you're you're left with what like nine hundred thousand dollars, and so that's just quick math. <laughs> yeah. And so like, the, what are you gonna do with that? And then I mean, on top of that, you're not a financial investor. You know how to make sophisticated bombs. You don't know how to make good investments. <laughs> yeah. This so is you're gonna blow through nine hundred thousand so fast. Yeah. This is a sophisticated bomb, not a sophisticated you're gonna be poor bond. next year. Yeah. And you're like every survivor winner. <laughs> Uh, should we film that bit just in case? Actually, right here. In case, yeah, we can we can leave this in or cut it sure. out if we have Let's to. Go ahead, go ahead. But just in case we get it. Go Speaking ahead. of Survivor, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that we applied. Jared and I are in a brand new TV show. <laughs> I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Yeah, we're flying out in a month. We're gonna spend a month on a desert island and see if we can survive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's what it is. We, jeez. Uh, yeah, you'll know. <laughs> we yeah. applied for this. I don't know if we're gonna get it. I well, I mean, like now we know we got. Yeah, it. now we know. We know we, we know got now. it. Well, we can cut this I out if we didn't get it. I forgot that we did that. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> They emailed me and they said we got it. Oh yeah, baby. So okay. <laughs> that would be insane if by the time this comes out, we've been cast we've on been that. Cast though. On it, yeah, me, we do need to apply to more like dumb reality TV dude, shows. Lo- oh, why sorry, we, wa- great reality TV. Wonderful, shows. amazing, <laughs> watched, watched TV shows. Yeah, profitable. like we need to do like Amazing Race. Yeah, yeah. Because like I that. just love the idea that they're just like these two podcasters. <laughs> We're like, I like. I love the idea that they put struggling podcasters. Yeah, that's one hundred percent what I'm saying. <laughs> We're doing like no, it just say podcasters, but in quotation marks. Yeah, like podcasters. I love the celebrities do amazing race when their career is dying, and we're yeah. doing it to try to spur our, our podcast is dying. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, yeah, this thing's over. Yeah. Hey, if you don't want Tillin to die, by the way, I don't know yeah, which camera is on good, my camera. If you call. don't want Tillin to die, support us on Patreon. That's the only way these episodes come out. Uh, and is. so we're just really grateful for the people who support us. Uh, and if you don't support us, one day you might have to take the drive you're on right now without us in your ears. You Can know, you imagine. Could you imagine what that life would be like? Horrible. Anyway, wretched. I would pay three million dollars to never live that life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the FBI they get a bunch of crinkled up newspaper and they fill a bunch of bags with this crinkled up newspaper. They take a thousand dollars cash and they just lay it over the top 
real carefully so you can't see the crinkled up newspaper underneath it. So it kind of feels yeah, movie prop. Yeah, it feels it feels like a bag of cash, but like if you like go past the first layer, you're like this is not that's the news. <laughs> that's uh, the news. <laughs> and it's all about me. <laughs> Which is like kind of an ego boost, you know? Honestly, this is better than the money. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I just want to be on the that. I just want to be the front page of of Lake Tahoe news. <laughs> Both sides. Both sides. Nevada and California. Nevada, California. Go Even ahead. that little community underwater. <laughs> okay. The Tahids. Uh, <laughs> you haven't heard about that? <laughs> All right. Uh, so they do that. They get in the pl- they get in the helicopter. They fly out to the location to do the drop. Sure. They get there and there's nobody there. The, the obviously the plan was the the ransomer was going to be on the ground with a strobe light, just holding it up at the sky. So they'd be like, "Oh, there he is, it's land," um, and give him his money now. And uh, there was no strobe light. They circled around for a couple hours, couldn't find him. Came back and they were like, "Well, he's not there." And so they asked the governor of Nevada to go on the news and put out a statement and be like, "Hey, we got your three million dollars. If you want it, I like, call us back and we'll find you." If you want three million dollars, <laughs> call one eight hundred government governor. Uh, Is the helicopter still in play at this point? It's well, the helicopter still like exists. I don't know if I would say in play. It did have to land. Is it, what are you saying? <laughs> like, if you call in to get the money, oh, you do you get the also get the, the helicopter? helicopter? No, this isn't a Pepsi Jet scenario. This is a helicopter. This is a Hera, Hera, Hera's, Hera's helicopter. I'm trying to make a connection. That I, I got you. There was a Hera's across the street, actually, though. So cool. Anyways, <clears throat> so the governor makes a statement. Sure. Tries to get the people to be like, hey, this is where we are. Come bring us our money. Um, and in making that statement, the rest of like, Nevada and California and a lot of other states in the area were like, "Hey, hold on, what are you talking about? Like, what's going on over there?" So this starts to make national news yeah, that a there's a deal. bomb in this hotel that is barricading this hotel, and the FBI is looking for the guy trying to give them the ransom. Um, and so people travel <laughs> from all over the country with their own bombs, <laughs> and they're like, "Well, hold on, hold on. if he, they're just going to give he's out, he's not the only bomber. <laughs> we're all bombers too." So. Oh, it becomes a spectacle. Like people are traveling in. So to this see the becomes bomb. a thing. Everybody, the casino, the strip in State Line is packed. Everybody's yeah. here to see the bomb. Great for blow business. Up. Honestly, I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about faking a bombing to drum up some business <laughs> for what we're doing. You know, it's a great marketing <laughs> tactic. Well, the casinos they start placing bets on when the bomb's going to go off. Whenever I own a barbecue business, and this was the bad side of the business, <laughs> was I called in a bomb threat to my competitors and. <laughs> And is this that Italian restaurant? Dude, and that was this. <laughs> it was the other restaurant. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't do anything. That grenade was already there when I bought the building. All right. <laughs> it was somebody else's grenade, and it was a very sophisticated grenade. <laughs> the most sophisticated grenade you've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> No, all the other casinos in the area, they started holding like having bets for when the bomb was going to go. <laughs> okay, holding, I thought you were say holding hostages, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> holding and, bets. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, they're like, like when's the bomb going to go off? Place your bets now. And a couple of the casinos started printing T-shirts. <laughs> Here's another one. Wait, did it blow Ooh, up? Look at the building family. behind them. I survived the bomb. Lake did you, Tahoe, acc- you accidentally went ahead of the story? Didn't you? Your mouth. <laughs> you accidentally went ahead of the story with uh, that here's, one. Didn't here's you? my personal favorite T-shirt. I got bombed at Harvey. Well, look, the building is. <laughs> oh yeah, sh- sh- shut your eyes. <laughs> I didn't look at these on the big screen. I didn't realize it was blown up in my little mini, <laughs> mini screen. My computer screen's a two-inch screen. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Hey, make it big. I realize oh, so yeah, that it's we, can, up. we can edit this out. We can edit this out in case we go back in time and we stop the bombing. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's cut a version of, in case that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was great because it was great because those they t-shirts the they, t-shirts stopped the bomb. They, <laughs> they used the t-shirts to stuff up the bomb. You moron. So the bomb is not very sophisticated. You're so dumb. <laughs> 
The bomb can't be stopped by You're anything s- except for I want you to know Tim's face was so mad that he spoiled his own story. <laughs> he spoiled his own story. <laughs> He was so mad. (laughs) All right, go ahead. Anyways, yeah. So people were selling these T-shirts. Yeah, and people like I uh, love a whole family there. I know it's a super suburban family too. Yeah, Um, they 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 came from the burbs for this. Yeah, these this was an Ohio family for sure. Yeah, Um, (laughs) that came. No, that's a Utah family. Look at him. Look at the dad's haircut. He's. (laughs) Uh, that could He's, be a Utah fam. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so this became a spectacle. People were traveling from all over the place to be a part of what's Great. happening here. Um, uh, meanwhile, the police and the FBI they can't figure out. They have no leads on who the bomber is or how to get them their fake ransom. So they say, "Well, we need to try to figure out how to disarm this sophisticated bomb." And so they spend thirty-three hours with it, trying to figure it out. And so, tell me about your childhood. <laughs> Hmm. Thirty three hours in an interrogation room with a bomb. <laughs> they couldn't. They couldn't crack. They it couldn't open. crack it. No. Well, the bomb. The bomb was pretty. The bomb really was sophisticated. It had motion sensors on it, so if it moved at all, it would it erupt. There was. I think it was erupt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is just a, a, one of those paper mache volcanoes. <laughs> he rolled a paper mache. Releases volcano. the baking soda. <laughs> Very I'm sophisticated. So <laughs> and one of the papers just says B plus. <laughs> B plus, huh? <laughs> it was from grade school. He's like, I could use this again. He's like, he's that's his vengeance, dude. His grade school teacher's married to Should've Harvey. Should have been an A. Okay. Should have been an A. All right, Madam Gross. <laughs> I see you've moved on to bigger things. Um, and and there was a series of switches all over it. That's actually the what you thought were air holes. Those are switches. Oh. Um, and so you have to like turn all the switches in the right order to disarm. It's, it it really was a very sophisticated bomb that to this day the FBI studies um, because of how sophisticated it was. Okay. And uh, one junior FBI agent had the solution that they were like, this is probably the only thing that's going to work. Blow it up. <laughs> He said, "If we take a claymore, he's like, what if we took one of our own bombs?" <laughs> Literally, he was like, "He's like, if we take a little bomb near the head of the bomb, put it near the big bomb, <clears throat> and we just point it so the explosion goes right to the right part of the bomb, then maybe it'll just blow up that part of the bomb and not the whole bomb." Uh, and they're like, "That's a pretty good idea, there, Johnny." And so they they literally drew straws and had <laughs> one person who drew the short straw go set the bomb on top of the bomb. <laughs> it's like I guess I'm gonna go put a bomb on the bomb. This bomb's so sophisticated. Our bomb, okay. our, our bomb's not our as sophisticated as this bomb. <laughs> dumb, lame little our, stupid bomb. Our unsophisticated on bomb. On top of this magnificent, <laughs> this is beautiful, such a huge bomb. bomb. <laughs> uh, so they put it on. They put it on the bomb. One guy fell in love with the bomb. He thought it was so sophisticated. <laughs> he was like. He was <laughs> like, all I can think about is how nice that bomb is. Yeah, the guy went back to put a bomb, to put their bomb there, and they found another letter on top and of it. He was it. like, but please it was don't a love blow letter. It up. Please it was don't. a love letter to the bomb. Yeah, the most sophisticated bomb in the West. You've got my heart <laughs> erupting. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, Speaking of future episodes, we have a ton of past episodes. Uh, We have a back catalog of well over 100 episodes. Uh, So check those out. My current favorite is Nellie Bly. She was a journalist from the early 1900s who totally changed the industry, especially for women in the industry. Super cool story, but also kind of crazy. Uh, some of the things that she did. Uh, we had a lot of fun in that episode, so check that out. Uh, don't for- forget to subscribe, but ultimately just thanks for being here. So they put a tiny bomb on they top put of a it. tiny bomb on top of the, the sophisticated bomb and this uh, is it in the in the this in, is like the lobby of the casino. Okay. Um, Try to figure like because the carpet's orange. This is not in the casino. This is a recreation in a museum. Oh, okay, got it, got it, yeah. got it, got it, got it. Um, so <clears throat> they uh, uh, they set the bomb and then remotely detonate it, uh, and it didn't work. It blew up the whole thing. Uh, it blew, yeah. blew a giant hole in the side Holy of Holy cow! In the side of the hotel, um, and it wow. was it was the uh, most significant bomb ever detonated in the U.S. until the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, 
uh, in terms of wow. blast size. And, and you know, it's the FBI having <clears throat> pictures of this moment, which is what makes people go, that's convenient. Well, I mean, this has been going on for like two or three days. They've got like 24 seven cameras because everyone's got the bets going too. everyone's out here watching. There's actual video of this detonating and everybody cheering because then they won the bet like ah! I mean, they came to watch this hotel blow up. So like, that's why they're here. Um, okay. No one was in there. No one was injured. A bunch of windows got blown out of the hotel across the street. Um, yeah, who pays for it? Does the FBI pay for this? <clears throat> I think they would. Well, maybe the insurance company. That's what I'm saying. Know. Like it's, your, insurance it's like, company the, cover it's like the end of a Marvel movie where it's like the heroes destroyed a lot of stuff. Yeah. Who pays for it? I mean, you should have insurance. Ideally, insurance covers this, right? You think State Farm's showing up and taking care of this? Yeah. I mean, State Farm does not have a sophisticated bomb clause, so I feel like they would. They have an unsophisticated. They have a stupid little bomb. <laughs> like, clause. If it's blown up by a dumb bomb. Stupid bomb. Then you're good. But yeah, so, so this what you're saying is the FBI <clears throat> was like, "There's a bomb," <laughs> and they were like, "The only thing that will fix it <laughs> is another bomb has struck the casino." <laughs> Two bombs. The only thing stopping a bad guy with a bomb is a good guy with a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tagline of the episode. <laughs> Golly, it's so good. I hate it. <clears throat> so this blew a nine story hole on the side of the hotel. Yeah, I can see it goes all the way up. Yeah, and uh, this seriously. is such an insanely stupid solution. <laughs> That's what I'm just so beside <laughs> myself on because this is so <laughs> dumb that they would be like, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> so, so they uh, did the guy that suggested this get fired or promoted. He got promoted. Cool. The guy His career diverted. blew up. Yeah. Tell you what <laughs> um, two days later they reopened. Uh, <laughs> Not fixed. They just quartered off these sections of the hotel that were it's blown up. It's a breezeway. <laughs> Come feel the outdoors. I mean, it's the eighties. Let's be honest. Like, of course, they reopened two days later. Um, <clears throat> and then the FBI was like, "Sweet, we don't have to give the money away anymore." But they also had no leads, and so the FBI interviews five hundred people. Oh, sweet, we don't have to lose our thousand dollars, <laughs> and. <laughs> Crumpled up newspaper. <laughs> that was some good newspaper. Um, <clears throat> so they interview 500 people. They have no leads. Absolutely no idea. You're going to leave this up this here rest of the episode? To. Yeah, I could. You want to? Um, <clears throat> absolutely no idea who did this, right? Um, so they interview 500 different people, and eventually they hit a break when could someone. Could you imagine working at the casino, finding out that it blew up? Yeah. <clears throat> and then your boss calls you. And he's like, "Hey, you coming in tomorrow?" <laughs> the casino blew up. What oh, are you talking about? Yeah, your shift starts at nine. <laughs> we expect you to be there. <laughs> okay. If the Chipotle by my house blew up, <laughs> I would still go, and I'd be like, "Guys, I mean, come on." The guac was not great today. <laughs> yeah, you can make better veggies than that. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> uh, so they, they they interview all these people. They find a motel owner who says, "You know what? I did see a white van stay the night the night before the bomb arrived." Vans are always sketchy. Yeah, and so they they checked the security camera footage. They found the license plate number. They ran the license plate number, and it came back for a John Burgess Jr. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so they went and they found this John Burgess Jr. It was a guy who lived in Fresno, California. Um, he lived with like five roommates and they he did not fit the description of a person who would do something like this. He had sure. if they interviewed him. They couldn't find a reason he was wearing an I survived the bomb shirt though <laughs> and they were like I, we might have our guy. We might have he was like he's like, but I'm gonna buy a shirt like I didn't get my money, but I'm gonna get a shirt. Uh, of course I'm gonna get um, and so they interviewed him. They couldn't. They couldn't connect I, he him to made it, the shirts. They <laughs> that's and that's protecting your investment. You know what I'm saying? Like if it, you know, if I don't get the three million dollars, at least I made. At least I made some some money on the shirts, souvenir shirts. 
you know? <laughs> so I crossed the state line, put in my, put shirt, in my order, shirt order because they don't sell shirts home. in Nevada. They don't. You got to go to California for that. Uh, <laughs> um, so <clears throat> they couldn't connect him to it, though. They didn't have any solid proof that he was connected. They just knew he had a fan there the night before the bomb showed up. Okay, um, but he said he wasn't there. He's claiming he wasn't. He wasn't a part of that. Um, and so they're doing some more digging and eventually they find this man's ex-girlfriend uh, who's that's who you always got to watch out for. This is now like three or four years later. They find this. Oh, wow. This man's ex-girlfriend who's dating another guy. They've got a they've got a warrant out. They've got a reward. Is it relevant that she's dating another guy or is that just like a, it is, a little detail that you <laughs> threw in? She's dating another guy. No. Yeah. So she's dating this other guy and they've got a reward out. For anyone who can lead you back to this other guy, the other like, guy's like, hey, "Hey, my girlfriend told, told me, me about this bombing that her ex did it. Her ex's dad did." And so, <laughs> <laughs> see what you're gonna say. I'm writing it down. <laughs> no, there's no joke. I'm saying my my ex's dad has done some. <laughs> we should frame him for something. <laughs> He can afford the legal fees. Does he listen? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he can listen in prison. That's kind of like what's <laughs> nice. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so his dad. A little bit of story about John Burgess, Burgess Senior. Senior. John Burgess Senior. He wrote a memoir. <laughs> and it is memoir. No, we don't when know it's a bomber. It's called a manifesto. <laughs> That's not a memoir. So we don't know if this is true, but according to the memoir, he was born in 1922 in Hungary, and he flew for Nazi Germany in the war as a pilot. Oh, jeez! Uh, after the war, he was arrested by Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union. <laughs> you know the one. Uh, and he spent eight years in a camp in Soviet Union. They released him. Jeez! And he got away for a couple years, and then they got him back and put him back in prison for a few more years. Finally, in 57, he escapes and moves to Fresno, California, where he works a couple jobs and then him and his wife, they open a restaurant and then he opens a landscaping company and strikes it big as the biggest landscaper in Fresno, California and they become millionaires. He owns a private jet. He owns sports cars. They have a mansion like they're living. They're living the American dream in the late 60s, early 70s. Wow. Okay. California. Well, <clears throat> when their children, they got two sons, get to high school. Uh, him and his wife start having marital issues. Uh, they start having a lot of disagreements and arguments. They eventually divorce. Um, and she, she starts dating somebody else. Well, she, she moves peculiarly to a trailer on in the backyard of his mansion. This is a strange arrangement. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, she, like a nice trailer, though. I, I don't. No, the nothing said. It just said a trailer. It's a trailer. Okay, it's just a trailer. Uh, and then uh, allegedly, we say allegedly because it's very alleged. Yeah, his she, memoir says all this. Yeah, that well, allegedly she took her own life it, two years after the divorce in this trailer. Oh, it's sure pretty likely that, that he killed her. That he killed her. Um, but that's the. But that's what he that's wrote in the memoir. Well, he didn't write that in the memoir. That's like public. That that was what it was ruled as, but. It doesn't. It seems to be right about her death in the memoir. Not in the memoir. Okay, uh, and so he uh, he then goes on to continue running the businesses, but he's very clearly kind of fractured at this sure. point. Um, and so he starts making some questionable business decisions in the restaurant, which was ran by his ex-wife. And so the restaurant gets into some some uh, financial trouble. Okay, uh, and then peculiarly in the late seventies, like seventy eight. The restaurant burns down and gets a three hundred twenty five thousand dollars insurance settlement um, <clears throat> around the same time three or four years before then um, Burgess senior. Yeah, uh, he develops a gambling habit and his location of choice is the Harvey Casino in how far away is that from from Fresno? A couple hours. It's not. Yeah, it's close. So he'd drive over. He would drive over. He would stay there. And he built the reputation as a high roller in the casino. He would show up and they would roll out the red carpet for him. He would get sweets. He's a very sophisticated man. He's so sophisticated. (laughs) Um, And he was he was such a presence at this hotel. He was he was a wealthy person to begin with, but he he spent so much that the hotel really rolled out rolled out the red carpet, gave free free meals, free locations. He 
developed a relationship with Harvey Gross, the owner. Yeah. And they became pretty good friends. His issues are getting bigger and bigger. It right. seems pretty clear that he spent that entire insurance settlement at the casino. Okay. Um, and he starts to build up some debts that he can't pay. Um, even with the amount of money that he has, the fortune that he has built up over his life. Uh, and uh, one day he approaches his sons and he says, Hey, I'm going to bomb the casino. <laughs> he says, uh, I'm out of money and I owe the casino a lot of money. Um, and so we're going to get our money uh, <laughs> from the casino <laughs> so I can pay the casino back. <laughs> so he's like, I need to get $3 million. And, I'm two million in the hole, yeah, and then a million to gamble. Yeah, a little bit of interest, sure. Uh, <laughs> and so he says, "Here's what I need you guys to do." He's like, "You got that white van that I bought you a little while ago." Um, he's like, "Yeah, Dad, that was a weird gift." <laughs> yeah, that's red flag number one. If your dad buys you a white van, and it's just like, "Hey, kids, hey, I got you." Why did you give me a gift? <laughs> I know it's not your dream car, but it's got but four it's, wheels. It's a car, and it's got enough room for crime inside. <laughs> For what? Crying. For crying inside. <laughs> For crying. crying. So he <laughs> says, I want you to go drop this bomb off. What? So he says, he says, I a couple nights ago went over to this construction site and uh, it was really easy to just sneak in and I stole a whole bunch of dynamite, like just a ton of dynamite, like so much dynamite. And they're like, Dad, that's. What that's like a lot of dynamite. Dad. <laughs> like that, that's so sketchy. That's a ton of dynamite. That's, <laughs> that's so, so much, much dynamite. dynamite. And he's like, "You're not gonna believe how sophisticated <laughs> this bomb's gonna be." <laughs> You're not gonna believe it. Uh, and so he says, "He says I'm gonna bomb. I'm I'm gonna bomb the casino." Here's the plot. Um, and his sons are like, "Dad, no, we're not gonna be a part of that." And he's like, "He's like, well, now you know too much." So so. Why don't you guys come to the casino with me on August twenty? <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just go. They're like, you're already an accomplice. Dad, no. <laughs> and so they know about this, but they refuse sure. to be a part of this because they didn't have a great relationship with their father. He was the relationship sure. was bad. He was abusive, not a great father, you know. Um, and so uh, he hires a couple of his former landscaping employees uh, for. The reports vary between two hundred and two thousand um, dollars. So I think what it was was one of them got one paid of them got better. two grand, <laughs> and the other two got four hundred dollars each. <laughs> um, to roll up and drop this thing off at the casino, they were told, "Hey, it's really fragile. It's a computer device. Here's how you need to handle it. It's just super fragile. Like, make sure you drop it off, and you're good." Um, and so they go drop it off, and then there was this other woman. Uh, that he hired that used to like run reception for him. That was going to be answering the phones. Is this giving. all allegedly or is this what happened? This is what happened. Wow. <clears throat> and so he hires this other woman uh, and so she was going to answer the phones. So she wrote the note and then she was going to tell them uh, the location to travel to, but then well, she... she gave them the wrong coordinates. Uh, and so the guy was sitting there <laughs> with his strobe light. Was he really out there? <laughs> yeah, he was out there with the strobe light to get the ransom and his plan was they're going to land the helicopter I'll overpower the pilot and I'll take the helicopter and I'll fly south of the border. Yeah, that's and I mean, my pilots life. are pretty overpowerable. Yeah, <laughs> when you no, they're when pretty weak. They're built that way. <laughs> they're, they're built, built to be overpowered. They have to be light. Their bone density yeah. is really thin, so that way they can fly just like birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what they didn't, what he didn't account for was the fact that the I've FBI, been fighting my robot every day, really <laughs> preparing to. He's in their final rock em sock em robot. <laughs> yeah, that was him for some reason. He let it win sometimes to keep his confidence up. So <laughs> didn't want to, I don't want it to quit fighting me. It's got to have some victories. Dad, why are you better to this rock em sock em robot than you were to us? <laughs> Well, boys, I learned my lesson with you, son. This thing doesn't ask me for money all the time. I saw the way you turned out, and I Good. thought, man, I'll tell you what, this rock'em sock'em robot would put a bomb in a casino for me. <laughs> it's not even asking that much, son. <laughs> and so, that's what you got to hope, man. You got to raise them on the right path. And, you know, that's the only <laughs> hope as a parent is that your kids will bomb a casino for you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so he was out there. Yeah, what he didn't account for was the fact that the FBI was going to have somebody else in the helicopter. He didn't think about guns. that at all. 
No, yeah, he was just like, yeah, they'll just fly one. Well, what he said was to just have one person in there. He didn't anticipate that they would, you know, not do that. Um, so his plan was pretty flawed. He built a, an incredible bomb to this day, an incredible bomb. Um, studied. So they arrested him. Like bomb. Let me let me tell you how sophisticated this bomb bombology. Is. <laughs> bomb experts to this day say that we don't think our technology today could have cracked this bomb. We think that the only solution was to ex- like execute the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with that. Execute our only solution was to execute the bomb. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah. So they uh they ended up tracking this guy down. They arrested him. They gave him a life sentence oh, wow. in prison. Um. Which he served. Uh. He did 14 years and then he died. Uh. In was prison. he a Nazi? I mean, he fought for. It, it, there's no. There's no sign. Like there's no report anywhere of like he was like. A Nazi. a Nazi because he was or he was just like he was a he part of there. So he the, had to yeah, fly like, you know, fly, like yeah. it was it's not clear. Um, so yeah, he would have known how to fly the helicopter then. So yes. Yeah, he was a pilot. Ah. He had a private jet. He had his own like he knew how to fly, um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, um, the woman got arrested. She served eight years. Um, the two or the all three of the, the men, she did answer the phone and give him coordinates. Yeah, and she, she wrote the note. She knew exactly what was going on. The her. three people who dropped off the the they had no van. idea. Well, mm, it's questionable. They ended up going to jail for a few years for their involvement. Um, and then Harvey Gross uh, collected a very large insurance settlement, and there is still questions about him to this day on his involvement in this. Oh yeah, because they're pals. Yeah, they're good friends, and he got a very fat insurance settlement out of the ex- the execution uh. of the bomb. Um, but uh, obviously, he didn't go down. Yeah. So. The butcher never does. <clears throat> There's a chance that the butcher heard the story about how Burgess got his insurance settlement when his uh, restaurant burnt down and said, well, well Burgess, why don't we bomb my casino. He said Burgess owes us a lot of money. Here's a way to pay your debts and yeah. Oh, so how long did he died in prison? Yeah, Burgess died 14 years after his Sentence. Wow. Uh, in prison, um, it's not confirmed whether or not Harvey Gross did that or not. Yeah, but I would believe it. When did I Harvey Gross die? I actually don't know. I don't know if there's any record still of him anywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's been alive for six hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, maybe sketchy all the way around. Maybe sketchy all the way around. But yeah, a lot of people survived the bombing. Uh, everyone did actually, except for the bomb. <laughs> R.I.P. to that bomb. Yeah, R.I.P. to that bomb. Killing the only way to stop a bad bomb is is a is a good guy with a bomb is an all time line. That's so good. I hate you for that. That was I'm proud of that one. Anyway, all right. Uh, you know what the wildest part of the whole story is though? No. Um, it's crazy to me. You kind of you kind of mentioned it that like literally within forty eight hours, this bomb going off. People were employees were getting calls to be like, "Hey, show up for your shift." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show yeah. up for your shift. What's craziest is that forty-eight hours after this bomb goes off, in the lobby of the hotel, phone rings. <laughs> Where do you go with this? In the lobby. Yeah, tell me, tell me more about your so angle. You go, Hello. <laughs> A voice in the line goes, "Hi, um, I messed up the coordinates." <laughs> But we're still interested in receiving our helicopter. Do you still have my money? Do you still have our money? It's like you've already executed the bomb. <laughs> yeah, we can't. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. There's another bomb. There's a yeah. There's another. There's another bomb. <laughs> Where the other it's, casino is there? It's right there. It's right next. This to phone you. is a look. Bomb. This phone's a bomb. <laughs> You better hang up. Don't hang up. This phone has to go 60 miles an hour. Or it'll blow up. <laughs> I don't know. Sir, going, you're not making trying, any sense. I was trying to fiddle off the episode. Where were you going? Well, I was trying to as well, um, but you reminded me of something. He actually, because there was so much time between yeah. this, he had, because he didn't never got his money, he stole thousands of pounds of dynamite again and was plotting another bombing when they arrested him. He was like, all right, I'll do it again. Yeah, because he was like, he's like, well, I didn't get my money. That didn't work the first time. Let's try it It'll, again. 
and that's a lesson. If things don't work the first time, <laughs> try, try, try again. Try again. Yep, yep, yep. And that's what they say. Every time you fiddle off the devil, if you don't win the first time, you got an eternity Rock in hell. Sock them with the devil, dude. <laughs> Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, if you like this and you want more episodes, there's more somewhere around here and also clips from the show. Uh, but make sure you subscribe. Please do that. That really helps us. Um, it makes us feel good. We look at the number and we go, oh my gosh, there's more people who like us. Um, and it also just makes sure that you don't miss episodes in the future because we put these out every single week. And there's so many in the past, so many old episodes you can go watch. And you know, there's an entire season of episodes that we didn't even have video for. So you can go listen to those if you'd like to as well. Thanks for being here. We will see you again next week on, on things I learned last night. That's this podcast, called, right? right? That's this one? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Things that's, I learned last night. That's the one. All right, you're free to go. Great. <laughs>